When you think of vegan food, what do you think? Of uh, grass. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Busy Vegan Mom. My name is Rachel and I'm here to offer guidance and direction to anyone who is looking to add more plant-based foods into their diet or anyone who's looking to go completely vegan, I'm here for that also. So without further ado, let's get started on this week's video. This week's video is all about how to order vegan at any restaurant that you go to. Yes, you absolutely can find a way to eat vegan no matter where you go, and I'm here to share all of that with you. Plus, stick around to the end because my brother is going to try vegan food for the very first time and give his absolute 100% honest appraisal on what he ate. So first and foremost, I wanna share that a super helpful resource to me all throughout my journey has been PETA's website, P-E-T-A, um, and I will share a link to that and you can literally go there and it will reference any type of uh, place that you're going to eat, whether it be Mexican food, any, any type of Asian food, whether that's Chinese, Okay, I just wanted to pause here and say I don't know why I said Asian twice. Sorry about that. Asian, Japanese food. I mean, they've got like every single style of food and how you can order vegan at a place like that. So it's super important if you're going to a place that you've never been to before, or maybe it's a not a chain restaurant to where it's like locally owned, it's always good to call ahead. So looking at the menu ahead of time, maybe having an idea of what it is that you might order and giving that place a call and asking, hey, does X, Y, and Z, does this, does this plate or does this dish, does this side have any milk? Does it have any eggs? Does it have, you'll, you'll start to learn over time the things that most commonly come with either eggs or milk or butter and sometimes things that you wouldn't think would have those ingredients in it do. So it's always good to ask just to be sure. Of course, the best way to avoid these types of things is making your own food at home, but that's just not ideal, right? We want to be able to partake and go out to eat with friends and family and loved ones and celebrate, so we've got to be prepared. So again, calling ahead if it's a place that's not a chain restaurant is super ideal and finding out exactly what you're walking into before you go there and having a little bit um, of an idea of what you can and can't eat. That way, when you get there, you can order effortlessly off the menu because you've already called ahead. And a lot of the times, if it's a place um, that maybe doesn't um, have too many different options. A lot of times the chef or someone in the back is willing to come speak with you or the manager or somebody like that is able to find out more information on what it is that you're seeking in your food and they can come up with your own little special plate in the back. But that's worst case scenario if there's like nothing at all that they make that accommodates your eating style. But that has been done for me before. And I know it seems like, oh, I don't wanna put anybody to trouble, but it's for your health. Absolutely, they're happy to accommodate you. So don't be afraid to ask. Um, and then you get in the habit of asking and feeling comfortable. And then it's just like second nature. When you go to a place, you're like, hi, I'm that person that's gonna ask you uh, for no dairy, you know, this, that, and the other. And it's fine. There's people all over the world with all sorts of allergies and health conditions where they can't have this food anyways. So I feel like the awareness in the restaurant energy, in, um, in the restaurant in industry, sorry, has really raised quite a bit as you have so many people that can't eat certain things or their bodies um, just can't tolerate it. So it makes you wonder if our bodies were even meant for certain things like that to begin with. But that's another topic, that's another video. Also, another tip when you're going to a restaurant is you might wanna omit from your vocabulary saying to the waitress or the waiter, do you have anything vegan friendly? The reason you don't wanna say that is because a lot of people don't know what that means. A lot of people, in my experience, think that vegan friendly means gluten-free or they think that it means like no oil or they don't understand what veganism is or what that means. A lot of times you can say the term vegetarian, they will understand that. So if you wanna start off, if, if you were going to ask for a plate that's vegetarian, most people know that that means no meat, but that's all that means. You still got your cheese, your eggs, the dairy, everything like that. So if you're gonna ask in that way, I wouldn't say vegan, unless you're in a big city. A lot of the times a big city, they're very familiar with stuff like that, but still you can't be too sure. I always like to, really drill down on, okay, what is in this food that I'm about to eat? And be very you know, specific. Sometimes people will, just because they say, yeah, it's vegan, or yeah, it doesn't have dairy, like, 
sometimes it'll come out and then it's got eggs or, you know, something. So there's all sorts of different situations. You just have to be very specific in what you're wanting and not wanting in your food. So my word of advice when you're going to a Mexican restaurant, what I always do and I've learned by mistake is that if you're going to be asking about their rice, you have to ask, does the rice or is the rice made in chicken stock? A lot of the times it is. It's very uncommon that you'll be able to go to a place and get rice that's vegan friendly unless it is a already a vegan friendly restaurant. Sometimes they don't make it with chicken stock, but a lot of time your authentic authentic Mexican dishes are going to have the rice made in chicken stock, which means it's not vegan. When it comes to your beans, a lot of times your beans are made in either bacon grease or lard. So it's good to ask for black beans. You almost want to assume every time that your refried beans are going to have something in it. You can ask, maybe they don't, but a lot of the times they will. Even the black beans sometimes can have other ingredients in them. So you want to get very specific when asking about the beans. Do you have a black bean option? I can't have any, you know, tell them I, I, I'm not going to eat any meat or any bacon grease or anything like that. One time I went to a place and was ordering burritos after having once asked if the beans were safe. They told me they were. And I noticed myself and the baby because she was breastfeeding that there was a different thing, something different going on in our body. Come to find out later, they were made with bacon grease and I had no idea. So, I mean, we make mistakes because maybe somebody told us that didn't have the correct information, but it's okay. Now I know, and now I know what to ask for next time and what to tell them to leave out. Um, and we learn by mistake, right? So that's why I'm sharing this video with you guys so you uh, can have some awareness when you're going to these types of restaurants. Also, um, a lot of the times tortillas are vegan. Um, you do, there are certain places like Rosa's Cafe and a couple other places where uh, the, the tortillas are not vegan. So you can always look up the allergens prior to going to the restaurant or when you get there. A lot of times they have an allergens menu as well and you can ask. If your waitress seems to not, or waitress or waiter seems to not know and they're uncertain, you always want to say, can you please go ask somebody in the back for me? Can you please ask your manager? Because somebody there has to know what's in that because of all the allergies that, that people have to different foods. So if they seem uncertain, it is okay. Can you please go ask someone in the back? Because they always do that for me because they want to, you know, make sure. And it helps them to learn like what's in the product that they're selling. And um, then it gives you confidence knowing you're eating something that is completely animal product free. So when you're going to eat at any sort of Asian food restaurant, something that you will want to um, ask to make sure that they omit from your plate would be any type of fish oil. A lot of the times, uh, or they've used like oyster sauce. And this is, again, was something I learned uh, by mistake. And you will notice a difference when you have it, um, this, this ingredient taken out of your food because the sodium, uh, it won't, the sodium content will be a little less. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you talk to your waiter or your waitress and have them leave out any sort of fish product or um, oyster product as well, because that's something that can commonly be snuck into your, you know, your pad thai dishes, your tofu dishes. It, you can get a lot of things that are vegan and vegetarian friendly at these places. You just have to know uh, what to ask to be left out. Um, and then you can be very successful. And again, PETA's website was super helpful for me in this regard. I mean, they literally nail everything down. But, and, and again, experience is really your best teacher when it comes to stuff like this. So let my experience be helpful to you. If you're going to a steakhouse, I mentioned this in a previous video, and I, I really wanted to do a video on what it looked like going to a steakhouse because, you know, I live in Texas. We have tons of steakhouses around. You think, oh, people, you know, when we're, I'm going to go eat with family, they go, oh, well, Rachel can't eat anything there. Sure, I can. Absolutely. We're not going to go to a different place just because you know, just because of me, I know how to make accommodations. I know how to order off a men any menu anywhere. Going to a steakhouse, you can absolutely still go. A lot of times fries, you just want to make sure, ask how, how they're, they're cooked and prepared. And if you are somebody who's okay with eating something that's been fried next to the animal products, I mean, that's up to you. But a lot of times potatoes and fries are good. Almost every steakhouse has a sweet potato option. To me, sweet potatoes are amazing by themselves. They don't need anything on them. They're naturally sweet, taste amazing. Ask for a dry sweet potato. You can get a plate full of sides at a steakhouse. Um, of course, side salad's always great. Just make sure that you omit any sort of cheese 
or eggs that would normally go on there. And a lot of times croutons may or may not be vegan friendly. You'll have to check with your waiter or your waitress. But the side plate that I normally get at a steakhouse is gonna be steamed broccoli. Please keep in mind that every single steakhouse, most of the veggies are done in butter. So just because it doesn't say butter in on your menu doesn't mean anything. You'll want to make sure you disclose to who's ever taking your order that you do not want any butter or any dairy products on your veggies, that they need to be completely dry of butter. So I get a, a, a sweet potato dry and I'll get a side of steamed veggies no butter, and then I'll get a large order of, Lindley. they have steak fries or some sort of something like that that are normally really, really good, and it's a potato, that's two sources of potatoes, so that's really filling, and then you're getting some greens in, um, and you know, they bring those beautiful rolls out. A lot of the times, those aren't vegan friendly, so you'll want to ask, does the bread have eggs or dairy in it? And you'll begin to you know, learn this stuff and know it like the back of your hand when you're going to eat. I can go anywhere to eat in my hometown, and I know what I can and what I can't get. Um, so that is really, really, uh, you know, help important, you know, to, to learn, to, to make these mistakes, to go, to ask and, you know, knowledge is power, um, by, ask. we don't know unless we ask and you do your research. Again, PETA's website is amazing for this kind of stuff. The one type of genre of food that I will say is a little more challenging to order vegan that I have found would be German food. Um, I went to a local German food place here. And it's a shame because German food tastes amazing. Um, but a lot of the stuff uh, does have, you know, dairy in it. So I have found that getting the cabbage, uh, it works. And um, I don't remember what else I got from there. I know I got cabbage and something else and that I, it was able to hold me over. Um, but you just have to ask. You have to ask because there's all sorts of like tricky hidden in ingredients and all sorts of foods. Because these are like, you know, dishes that have been made forever. And that's how they've always been made. And that's how they all, you know, taste amazing. So, um, but yeah, if you are trying to eat dairy free, you'll definitely want to call ahead um, to your local German uh, restaurant. And or you could always look up how to make a yummy German dish at home. So, um, yeah, I think I covered a, a lot of different types of food. Oh, Italian food, of course, going to eat, you can, there's tons of options at an Italian place. There's always the option of pizza. Just have them leave the cheese off, add tons of veggies. It's really good like this. It sounds crazy to a lot of people, but this is how I always eat my pizza. Um, do double check on the dough. A lot of dough, most of the time is vegan friendly, but you always want to double check, especially if you're going to a local, like uh, a local place. Maybe it's like the only, you know, Italian uh, food place and you're hometown you just want to ask you always want to ask ahead of time spaghetti noodles are normally always unless it's some sort of egg noodle at an asian place but in regards to italian food noodles are normally always vegan and you can always get some lovely spaghetti and uh pasta sauce and have them add in some veggies they sometimes have like a mushroom spaghetti plate which is amazing um, and again, in regards to your bread, you'll always want to ask if the bread is dairy free and you'll have to specify a lot of times eggs. Is there no eggs? Is it made with butter? Um, is there milk in it? You have to ask, just ask these questions and get very specific and it's okay if they have to leave a couple times and go back and ask, it helps them learn. And then it helps you feel more confident again in what you're eating. And you don't have to worry if, oh, did I absolutely, did I accidentally eat something that was, had animal product in it? So that is what's been helpful for me. I hope that all of these tips were super helpful and be sure to leave a comment if I left any type of category out or if you have any questions about going to eat somewhere. I'm going to ref I'm going to continue to leave um the link for or PETA so that way you have that as a guide because it's super helpful. And next I'm going to show you a clip of my brother trying vegan food for the very first time. I hope you guys enjoy it. Take a look. Uncle Robert? Yeah. Yeah. I do this. <laughs> Are they gonna video the whole time? <laughs> no, just some of the time. Say hi. What's up? Hey. Alright, I get that vegan double cheeseburger. I get like everything on the side as far as like um, 
like the lettuce and all that stuff. Yeah. So just like the fake meat and the bread. Just the meat <laughs> and the cheese and the bread. Um, I'll do the butternut squash uh, pizza then. So I'm here with my brother and he's gonna try vegan food for the first time. We're at a place in Austin, Texas called True Food Kitchen. It's really good, I've been here like two times. And so, have you ever, ever, ever had anything vegan before? Are you nervous? Yes. When you think of vegan food, what do you think? Of uh, grass. <laughs> So what did you order off the menu today? Uh, vegan burger. Wow, okay. And you normally don't eat any veggies or like anything like that ever anyway because you've always been really picky. Um, the pickiest eater ever. Yeah. So he's gonna, the pickiest eater ever is gonna put uh, vegan food to the test. And so we'll see what he thinks about it when we get our food. <laughs> We just ordered these sea buckthorn shots, all wellness. Uh, they're for anti-inflammatory and supposed to be anti-stress. So we're gonna let you know how they taste. Hopefully we will have no stress today from those. <laughs> That's for wellness. <laughs> Look at Uncle Robert. Uh, uh, see, it looks like a normal burger, doesn't it? Ready. I mean, it's not the worst thing I've ever had. <laughs> what does it taste like? like? I mean, not a real hamburger, but... <laughs> but is it good? I got a scale of one to ten. Uh-huh. I'll like a five. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different. Yeah, it's different. It's gonna be different for sure. We're all done. Do you think you'll ever try uh, vegan food again? Not unless it's for a YouTube video. <laughs> what uh, a here's all my food. <laughs> I, took a I, bite. Get to t I get to take it home. I didn't know the burger had beets in it and I feel terrible because beets are a little strong. So. That's all right. I tried it with an open mind. That's right. Yay. That's good. If you're liking these videos, consider buying this busy mama coffee.